Duck with Red Dots. Aimpoint launches a new shotgun Red Dot site for 2024. Roy played with the prototype. Now Aimpoint winner Johannes shoots with the finished article. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That's how they do Driven Days in Sweden. Here's how they do them in England when the day is organised by school kids. Which of you is the best shot? Me. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> It's the 4th Air Guard Academy with Terry and Nicole. This week, breathing control when you are shooting air rifles. Is this too complicated? No, this is Good. brilliant. I'm like, I'm just soak it all up, soak it all up. In our field tester, Ian Hodge from Ian Hodge Field Sports looks at the PCP air guns that the pro pest controllers are choosing. David brings you the news on the new stump. James uncovers the best YouTube hunting films in this week's Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We are back at the Aimpoint Academy winners hunting event in southern Sweden and now we can finally reveal something we've had to keep under our hats for more than a year. Shot. The new Aimpoint Acro S2 red dot sight. Launch date 17th of January 2024. Talking of hats, Roy was testing the prototype in 2022. Okay. Happy? Can we go and have some coffee again? Thank you. We're going to be speaking to you a year from now when it's actually coming to market. So yeah, it's, it's quite nice and exciting just being able to play with the product and uh, yeah, have a bit of a tweak with it and put a little bit of input in about how we, how we yeah, enjoy it and how we've got on with it. <laughs> Interesting thing about this is we've got a nine MOA dot in it. So it's a much bigger dot, much easier to pick up. Back to present day and as well as driven game with the rifle where Academy winner Johannes showed us why he was one of the chosen ones, there's also a driven duck day. A great opportunity to showcase the new Acro S2. More of that in a moment. Our day of driven game looks to be a challenging one for all the guns as there is a brisk wind, even capable of shoving a tall Swede. To prove the point, Johannes does the official grass release <laughs> test, which is conclusive. So we've done anything like this before, Johannes? Yes, once. The first time was uh, one one month ago. At the, the same hunt when I won the, won the Aimpoint Shooting Academy, I was allowed to hunt ducks with Aimpoint here once before, but that was totally different conditions. It was 25 degrees and no wind at all, so this is going to be completely different. I think I got one. Oh, shots. Shot one, one duck. Uh, most of them were pushed in that direction. Wind is so strong, it's not, not easy. I, I struggle a little bit, but uh, there's some more few drives to go, so let's see. Our neighbors shot some really Beautiful shots, so yeah. yeah. Let's go find some gloves, yeah? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> the drive is a perfect warm up as we're not really in the action, but there's a lot more in store from drive two where things get a little busy. Johannes is now in the swing. As he mentions, he's a clay shooter, not a game shooter. He competes in compact and sporting. He's actually a German champion, which means that shooting with the Acro S2 is something he needs to adapt to. I'm used to not having a red dot on the shotgun for sure, but I've watched some people who are not experienced who really benefit from it. So 
When I saw it the first time, I wasn't a fan of it. Then I tried it and saw other people, so it definitely serves a purpose. If you have problems with dominance or aiming, it definitely helps. The ducks keep coming and Johannes takes some really good birds. Being in the action means Johannes is flying through the shells. If he runs out, Chief Instructor Eric Ars will be owed a bottle of whiskey. Should have brought more ammunition. <laughs> Apparently you've got to buy Eric a bottle of whiskey. No, I still have two shots left. I don't have to buy him a bottle. You're getting close to buying a bottle of whiskey. I know. It's close. Two cartridges save him from a single malt forfeit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, it's a relief. Yeah. We don't have to buy Eric a bottle of whiskey because I still have there two we, shots left. We don't have any shells we've got left. There we go. We have two. Bring them out. Close. The bag was full at the beginning. <laughs> That's still very difficult to shoot. They start, they move a lot to the side and slow down against the wind speed ridiculously up with the wind. So really happy. Yeah, yeah. That, was quite, that, was, that was cool. That was a very interesting drive. Yeah, we turn the shot cam off. Lunchtime. <sighs> Lunchtime. And first I have to pick up all the cartridges. <laughs> At lunch, we can talk to Alexander, who has been pushing hard to get the Acro S2 to market. So for the last year, we've been working on what we will call the Endpoint Acro S2. Acro housing with a new updated mounting interface, 9 MOA dot and touch buttons. So it's just such a nice product. I've talked to all the guys in between the drives and they're really, really happy that we've made this update. And uh, yeah, it will be launched at SHOT Show 2023. <laughs> 2034. So we we've, we've actually played this with this with Roy, didn't we? About nine? No, probably about eleven months ago. Months I think ago. that was yeah, November. Yeah. So it's been a long time in development. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Imprint has been really really busy. Actually, we decided to pause the development of it because the production was so busy. We couldn't really figure it out to do both the ramp up of building more products and also including a new product. So it's a bit delayed, but now we're launching at Media Day, the day before Shot Show. Cool. Excited? Yes, it will be a lot of fun. And the S1 was launched in 2016. As you know, you were probably filming the Academy that we did back then. So we've learned a lot and we know that this product is so much better. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sell hundreds and thousands of those <laughs> around the world. Uh, we have some markets that we, we're really pushing now, uh, UK of course as an example, but also outside Europe. So yeah, I think we'll all in all a really good product. With two more drives to go, Johannes has a stock malfunction. I just found out that this stock is moving, which means the gun is not, gun is not fitting at all, but I can just uh, like adjust a little bit and just focus on the red dot, so it doesn't really matter. Just... <laughs> yeah, just try to put the red dot in the middle and hopefully in front of the duck. Let's see. There's no chance of sympathy, especially from the gamekeeper who has his own make yeah. do and mend I like, issues. I like, I like this bit here. Yeah. Yeah. That's an expensive modification. Yes. It's good. A few issues with the stock, but apart from that. Really fun drive. You could really see a lot of them, but uh, very late. And they, when they catch the winter, just so yeah. fast. Yeah. But you're a better shooter than me. <laughs> This is another impressive drive. Jules, the other Aimpoint Academy winner, is on the neighbouring yeah, peg. Yeah, no, no, I did it after the drive. That's the problem. The problem is here. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole game. Was there a good no, team spirit? Really uh, for sure. I mean, uh, I'm happy for him to win. Yeah, I would yeah, have been happy sure. for the other 18 participants. 
um, but to, it was really, really cool, yeah. yeah. And Joe here I'm happy for I'm happy experience. for Joe. Are yeah, you happy for me? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy for you. It was more like a life experience, not a competition. And uh, yeah, personally, in my mindset, in my mindset, sorry, it was more like um, yeah, a life experience, uh, a good thing to know, and I have some really good tips for Eric for shooting <laughs> rifle and shotgun. So yeah, it was really, really amazing. As well as the hunting, there's been a chance to make new friends. Yeah, yeah. Vukashin and Milan have been great company. They run Serbia's answer to Field Sports Channel and kindly tell David that watching our films inspired them to start their own. Basically, I, I have started the entire project, uh, let's say, looking into you guys, and I figure out that why Serbia could not have it when the UK have it. So if people wanted to come to your part of Europe, what, what should they come for? What are the, what are the, what's the best hunting experience you could offer in, in Serbia? I would say it's something, let's say, different than entire Europe, definitely jackals. This is the, let's say, it's not easy hunt, it's, it's quite demanding, but it's really rewarding because it's, let's say, top of the food chain in, in, in Serbia, most of the Serbian hunting grounds where there is no wolf. And also good food, good fun. And <laughs> that's the most important part. I think that's the most important thing. The last drive marks the end of three days of Swedish hunting with plenty of highs and lows. Tomorrow, Johannes will be back to a normal life and his studies in Vienna. You said you would make me look like a god after I found your headphones on the, on the ground in the first drive. I will remember, yeah, remember that. Thank you. Uh, for Eric. Yeah. Here you go. Very nice. Over. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We finish by celebrating the game and thanking our host, the keeper and the beaters. For more information about the all-new Aimpoint Acro S2, go to aimpoint.com and we'll have more hunting adventures with the shotgun sight soon. Next time, bolting rabbits to shotguns. Thanks, Johannes, and all at Aimpoint. Now, in this week's Field Sports Extra, we have a joiner, a school kid, and Fleet Street's finest. I think we're going to end up with an avalanche of stories. There's more from that young shot later in the show. Also in Field Sports Extra, we give away Spy Point cameras, kindly donated by Bailey's Shooting and Country Wear. To support the Field Sports Nation, this week we've donated a Spy Point LM2 twin pack of trail cameras. So these are ideal for putting out in the bait stations or for protecting your live birds or just for security purposes. So good luck to all that enter. Link to that below and there's a QR code on screen. Easiest way to win it is to watch Field Sports Extra, which goes out the night before this show, only to Field Sports members. Easiest way to watch Field Sports Extra is to join those members. The Field Sports Nation will send you a goodie box. Link below. Next up, back to Field Sports Britain and from Ducks to Ducky. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. There's a warning this week that the lack of controlled heather burning on Britain's moorlands could lead to an environmental disaster this summer. Heather burning bans are in place across large swathes of British countryside. We'd normally be in the middle of the heather burning season. Land managers traditionally burn heather now to encourage new growth for birds and animals to graze on new shoots in the spring and create fire breaks. Ian Gregory, founder of the new political party Rural Reaction, says the burning bans could lead to an environmental catastrophe in the summer when plants on the moors dry out. Anybody who is practical around the world knows that if vegetation grows rank, then eventually there's going to be a very bad fire. Anybody knows that who lives in the countryside. Those who are making the decisions in natural England don't know that. They instead think that it's a danger to the countryside if we do cool burns on this at this time of the year. And the much, much greater risk is going to come 
and bite the government. It might be this summer, it might be next summer, but at some stage there's going to be an almighty fire on peatland. The underground peat will catch fire, be very difficult to put out, and it will blow away Britain's climate targets because so many millions of tons of CO2 will be released from this peat. And we want to make sure that the government is a nose that we have told it at this stage that they are making tremendous long-term mistakes here. Actor Stephen Fry has made a fresh appeal to stop British soldiers from wearing real bearskins. The distinctive bearskin caps have been worn by regiments in the British Army for more than 200 years and are still used by Guards regiments. They were first introduced to make it appear British soldiers were taller when they marched into battle. Each cap is carefully handcrafted and can last up to 80 years. Fry narrates a new video from the animal rights group PETA, which claims the practice of gathering the bearskins from animals legally hunted and killed in Canada is cruel. The Ministry of Defence says it has looked into alternative faux fur materials to make the caps, but none have managed to pass quality control tests. Atlantic salmon has been reclassified as endangered in some parts of the UK. The iconic fish has declined in some areas by as much as 50%, with the threat of worse to come. The classification is part of the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List of Threatened Species. The Atlantic Salmon Trust blames the decrease in population on factors including climate change, poor water quality, dams and barriers, and fish health issues caused by salmon farming. In the freshwater environment that, that we know is really important, uh, that's where that's where we need cold water. We, we're seeing the increasing effects of a changing climate, changing weather patterns as well. We need to be working in our, in, in our landscapes to give them that, that cold water. But we also need clean water, and that means water free from pollution, sewage, parasites and disease, whether that's in the freshwater or the marine zone. Meanwhile, new figures from the Scottish Government claim that red grouse and kestrels are officially in decline. Nature Scott blames climate change for the drop in recorded numbers of several bird species. It says that hotter and wetter weather has caused species such as grouse to dwindle, while other species are thriving. Good news for willow warblers, they're up by 50%. The study covers figures from 1994 and says that there are 62 bird species with unstable numbers. Hunters in Australia fear they're about to be banned from hunting ducks. Politicians in the state of Victoria are holding a poll to ask if a ban on hunting ducks would be supported through the Australian Parliament. Outdoor Recreation Minister and Labour MP Steve Dimopoulos proposes the poll. A group of Labour MPs oppose it, including Sheena Watt, a supporter of traditional hunting practices in Australia. A search is underway for new organisers for the Irish Game Fair. A team led by Albert Titterington and Paul Pringle have organised 69 game fairs in Northern Ireland and the South. Both have been forced to retire due to ill health. They've cancelled the 2024 Shane's Castle event, which usually attracts around 20,000 visitors, and are looking for a new team to take over in 2025. The announcement drew praise for their work from Irish Game Fair supporters from all over the world. A hearing at the end of the month could decide if elephant trophies could be exported from South Africa to the USA once again. Export permits are on hold after a court case brought by Humane Society International in 2022 in South Africa. The temporary ban has paused hunting tourism by some American hunters who can only import trophies into the States under license from the US Fish and Wildlife Service. South Africa faces an elephant population crisis with the Kruger National Park alone estimated to have four times more elephants than it can sustain. The Welsh Government faces a legal challenge after it allegedly mismanaged claims about pollution from chicken farms entering the River Wye. Fish Legal has issued a legal complaint against Natural Resources Wales, claiming it failed to deliver on its statutory responsibility when investigating claims about pollution on the river. Fish Legal says the Welsh Environment Agency NRW ignore key data linked to pollution from farms discharging waste into the Wye. Fish Legal has given NRW until the end of January 2024 to respond. Basque has launched a new register for deer stalkers who have passed the DSC2. The scheme is designed to provide a database for stalkers who have taken a deer management qualification or DMQ at DSC2 level or higher. The scheme excludes privately run qualifications such as the new proficient deer stalking certificate level 2. You can apply to have your details on the first official register of its kind. Basque says it hopes landowners will use the facility to provide more opportunities for its members. Increasingly landowners are finding it hard to find 
good deer stalkers. So the idea of the register is to provide that link between the two. And finally, a new film shows how rural life and following hounds brought happiness to the late philosopher Sir Roger Scruton. The 90-minute film on YouTube is on the European Conservatives channel and conservationist Charlie Pye Smith, former director of the League Against Cruel Sports, Jim Barrington and Roger's widow, Lady Sophie Scruton. Link below. Thanks to Richard Walton for the story. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. I'm going to school, but not just any school. Rugby players Will Carling and Will Greenwood, Simon Beaufoy, who wrote Slumdog Millionaire, and four recipients of the Victoria Cross. Sedba School in Cumbria treats education a little differently to other schools, and it produces stars. One of those differences is the shoot. Sedba is one of only a handful of schools in the UK to have its own gamekeeper, and one of those is Hogwarts. Come on, Harry. You're on film again, Harry. Run on a shoestring by the boys and girls, enthusiastically supported by parents, the master in charge is Mr Arnold. <coughs> I have uh, partridges hatching in my classroom in, in, in incubators. Um, so over 120 uh, pupils last, uh, last uh, summer term were watching partridge come out of the, uh, out of the egg. <laughs> The day starts with a briefing from this season's shoot captain, sixth former Wyndham, and guns disinfect their boots too. Many of the kids here come from farming backgrounds, and they know how important doing this is to both farm livestock and wild birds. Wyndham is a Cumbrian lad whose family farms near Bassenthwaite. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I've been shooting since I was about 10. Absolutely love it, yeah. From crows to pigeons, partridges, pheasants, grouse, anything I can get. <laughs> have a chance on really. I'm with Bella on the first drive. Everybody out shooting today has a mentor standing next to them, either volunteers or parents who shoot. Bella has Simon. Uh, just basically to make sure everything's safe, guide on how to shoot, shooting etiquette, things like that. So everyone has a mentor, that's a parent or someone from Basque that comes as well. And um, it's just so make sure everything's safe and that you learn how to shoot properly. If the parents are able to come along um, and they're um, experienced shot, um, then they'll stand with their son or daughter. If, however, the parents can't make it or the parent perhaps doesn't shoot, and we've had various families who've got into the sport because their son or daughter has, has joined the school shoot. Basque will either provide a mentor or we've got various shotgun coaches who come along. Right, if it comes, get ready. Shot. Who was that? Yeah, someone else got it. Yeah, somebody else shot. Someone else got it. Come out, they're going to start dipping. Okay. So they're never going to go straight unless you can see them under the belly. So you need to keep the bird on top of the barrel. And don't start in front of it. Come through to keep that gun moving. Because you're just picking a spot in front. Okay. Yeah, shot. Yeah, I think she's done really well there, yeah. She's got four or five birds down, uh, shot really well. Yeah, good start. She has her father and sister, Charlotte, standing behind her, watching what's going on. Charlotte will shoot this afternoon. Which of you is the best shot? Me. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> More experienced shot is me, but you might, you might think you're better, but we'll see. Okay. A whole two months of shooting. Father, would you like to 
I'm just going to sit on the fence, I think. I don't think I'd like to get between either of these and, uh, <laughs> and make a decision on that one. The school is justly proud of its shoot. Here's a member of staff on hand to take photographs. And it's all run by the kids. Harry is shoot secretary. Well, I sort of do all the tips, the money, uh, registering people and that, and then I run the gun line. So if captain will sort in the morning, then I'll do the afternoon, or if he's shooting in the afternoon, I'll do the morning like today. After a break for chocolate, it's on to a mixed duck and pheasant drive. This time, I'm standing with another lad called Harry. We're on our duck drive here, and we are... Well, I've been here for... I've been here since year nine, so this is my fourth year. Um, I've been, well, running one of our main pheasant drives of today. Um, so that's coming out every Thursday and feeding around. And that takes about a couple of hours. And yeah, it goes, it's very busy. You're being very cool about that. <laughs> Thank you. Harry's mentor is his dad, who keeps him supplied with steel cartridges. Thank you. He picks his birds carefully and he brings them down. What we try and do is try and drive them up the field and then get them to come round so all the guns have a go at dropping one, maybe. Harry ends the drive on a pair of good quality birds. There's a break for lunch and it's a chance to find out more about the shoot from Wyndham, who is the one who invited me here today. And Arnie. These are our pheasant pies. The boys and girls have uh, processed the birds from the last shoot and they've been turned into uh, pies for the shoot today, complete with a, a little uh, attempt at a pheasant on the top of them. So, <laughs> All of the, the processing of the game was done um, by us and then the pie mix was made by us um, and then we took that to uh, a processor in Kendall um, who made the pies and cooked them this morning and we transported them in. Um, for the day. Basically every Thursday afternoon we come out at about half one after lunch and then until about five o'clock. So every Thursday and then a few Sundays we come out with um, Arnie, three or four lads or girls each Sunday. But every Thursday all of 24 of us come out. The syndicate's full, there's a waiting list for uh, for the next year already. Um, I keep getting messages through on the ubiquitous Microsoft Teams these days. You know, sir, is there any chance of joining? Um, and it's great, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, they're very proud of, of what they do. So I've been coming for five years, since year nine, and we do from in the uh, winter feeding round, checking, emptying, blocking feeders. And then in the summer, this year we've just done our new pen up through that wood about 20 of us lads and girls we do that that's good that holds about a thousand birds i think in just that pen so we did a lot of grafting through the summer so we've got an incubator and i think we got about 200 partridge eggs i think it was about a success rate of about 60 percent which was to be fair it's quite good from getting eggs to incubators in a dt classroom because i know the year before someone unplugged the plug of the incubator so a few eggs didn't quite work out. I think it's about 500 acres in total but we uh, we only use a, a portion um, of that. The land itself is owned um, by um, uh, a local landowner who allows us to uh, um, to have the uh, um, the land uh, basically uh, for gratis but uh, um, the shooting rights are owned by the Forestry Commission so we pay the Forestry Commission for the shooting rights. We pay the same commercial rate that anyone else would, would do and we work with the Forestry Commission as well. Um, we've got uh, various projects going on where we work alongside the local, uh, local ranger. So um, there is a subscription to uh, um, be a member of the, uh, uh, of the shoot and um, it literally is done at cost. Um, the school doesn't contribute anything um, financially towards the, uh, the shoot. Um, it's all either the subscriptions or money that the boys and girls raise themselves at the annual dinner. Um, so you know, there is, there's no sort of a public school uh, big contribution going into them, them shooting. You know, we are only as you know, good as the effort that we put in. Um, and our shooting will only be as good as the effort that we put in. And that's very much the ethos amongst, um, you know, amongst the pupils. After lunch, guns and beaters swap over. The new guns draw pegs. 
I joined the beating line, a mix of locals and kids from the school. I'm in the care of 14-year-old Shutty. Yeah, you're been followed. You're coming a lot more with me. Oh, you're on, you're on the Yeah, music. I'm on the mic, yeah. Huh? Uh, so we're beating pheasants and partridge out of the bracken uh, and just heading them along along the wall side uh, to the guns. You've got a lot of gorse here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it stretches for about 500 metres that way. Uh, and it probably goes another 700 metres that way as well, so. Got any woodcock in here? Uh, there's, there's a lot of woodcock, yeah. You'll, you'll see a few of them coming out. Shutty learns his trade from the experienced beaters in the line. So I'm, I'm going off here, am I, at this corner? I'm going to to the right. Yep. And you'll see a path that comes up to the top, I'll meet you on the top. Right. It means he has a clear idea about what he and everyone else in the line are doing. The right side, that flank is going to come round and we're sort of going to try and force any birds that are left into this section here. So the main of the guns are down here. Uh, and for now, we're just trying not to get close to the edge. Shoot Captain Wyndham is also in touch with what the beaters are up to. This drive, we start with beaters way out, if you can see, out there, and to that side, about 200 yards that way. About eight beaters on each team, up the scar, and we bring it in to like a clump into the middle of the flushing point. And while we bring them in, we try to have a few singles out. You tend to get a few singles out on that peg one out there and a few singles normally out on peg 10, nine there. And then quite a big flush at the end between peg four, five, six, three, normally. The birds here are coming off an enormous Lake District scarp in front of us. The big problem for Wyndham is not the challenging height of the birds or the increasing rain, it's the parents behind him who have formed their own commentary team. Come on, guys. There is a level of competition here. Ed shot a good one to his left and then a good one to his right as well. Pretty good birds, nearly better than his brother, but not quite yet. <laughs> the weather is grim by the last drive. George, what peg are you? All right, who's Joe's peg two? Keep coming down. Drives start on the whistle. Oh, no. That's dry, that bugger's wet. Wyndham can now take a step back and let the guns go to work. Give Harry some stick on this one. Go on, Harry. Oh, oh. unlucky, Harry. It's all on film, Harry. Love it. Shot, Harry. Fell that one. You know what? Yeah, because he didn't have much time, so he just went, ma'am. He didn't. And again, Harry. Move in a bit, Harry. Oh, leg. Another yard in front of it, Harry. Louis will, Louis will fail this. Shot, Louis. And again, and again Louis. Oh, Harry. 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 Shot has it. That was Archie. Nearly at the end of the drive. Harry's got one, finally. Louis shot a few good ones and Imo got a good one as well. Louis on form, as you can see there. Harry, push on to Tom. Be careful, these birds are coming downhill. The end of the day sees guns heading home wet and happy. It's all the gamekeeping, it's the conservation work. The shooting is a small part of, of what we do. It's, it's year round. Um, working on the land, basically. For more about Sedba School, which celebrates its 500th anniversary in 2025, go to sedbaschool.org. Thanks, Wyndham, and all who helped out with that film. Next up, putting the class into classroom, Terry Doe's Air Gun Academy looks at how to breathe when you are shooting. This one's going to deal with breathing control. But before we start, we need to establish something. I've touched on it briefly in previous modules, but nobody can hold a rifle steady. Still is out of the question, especially in the standing position. So we're going to have movement. We must accept that we're going to have movement. And what we do is we get it on our side. We don't make it the enemy. We make it part of the technique. OK, so what we're going to do now, Nicole, into your shoulder, support that with the way we, we learned earlier. Yeah. OK, I'm going to close that. We're looking at that. Square target there, over there. So shuffle yourself around. Feet, they are shoulder width apart. And the back foot is locking the position in. Everything's nice and stable. Now, look through the scope. When you breathe in, 
the rifle will either rise or fall. It depends on your, entirely on your body makeup. So breathe in, what happens? It goes up. Right. So let's. So we're going to get an up-down movement. Yeah. Rather than wobbling about all over the place and trying to catch it as it goes past, Yeah. we're going to have an, a steady, controlled up-down. So okay. breathe in, up, stop, breathe out, let it fall, pause when it's ready, and then squeeze the trigger. Okay? Okay. That's good. That's good. We go again. It was a miss, but it felt good. No, we, as I said before, we miss in style rather than yeah. <laughs> fluke a hit. So, again, this is the most difficult position of them all. Okay. You're now finding stability through locking your elbows in, locking your knee down, push that knee back a little bit to lock it out. So, up, down, and squeeze. Okay? Mm. Now, all I want you to learn from this module now is that you can control the rifle. Okay. You're doing it now. You've, you've held it there for about 30 seconds, which you yeah. wouldn't do. Yes. We're going to take it now from the five second. Okay. Down there. Oh. <gasps> now, we've, we've seen the target. Yeah. Raise it. Get behind it. Breathe. And shoot. What a perfect shot. <laughs> Thank you. That was brilliant. <laughs> well done. Now it's time to refine the whole breath control thing. Okay, we've been through the basics. We're going to get your system down. All right. Everybody's system's different. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I want you to do and what suits you is a breathe in, take mm -hmm. it up, breathe out, drop it below the aim yep. point, and then breathe in again, recharge your muscles, bring it up, and slip the shot. And bang. Okay. okay so that is what, when I was watching you, that's what seemed to suit you. So okay. let's go. Go for it. Put it in the... The rifle's ready to go, put it in your shoulder. We're just establishing the pattern now. I'm not too worried about the success thing, but I know you are. Mm. But just establish the pattern. Get that rifle going up and down, controlled by your breathing, not thrashing around from side to side. Okay, a bit oh, quick on that one. You, yeah, that, you were on the rise. I, I felt that you I called, rushed that. You called that shot out. I did, I did. So all we're going to do then, from now okay. on, in your, in your copious spare time, Yes. Okay, the tons and hours and hours of spare time you've got. Get on the range and just keep going through this. Yeah. Keep going through it, but vary it. Vary it from, from this to the sitting, to the yeah. kneeling. But all the time thinking about your trigger control, mm -hmm. your follow through, yeah. your breathing. The more you do it, the more natural it will become. Yeah. I watched you compensating just then. I watched you moving and getting more stable. Yeah. You're doing it automatically. Your, okay. foot, your foot has moved forward slightly. Right. The back leg is bracing nicely now. It's not yeah. bent anymore. So the more you do this, your body will tell you, this is comfortable, this is more yeah. control, not this way. And you, you'll do it, you'll, you'll refine and you'll hone your own technique. Yeah. One more go. Okay. You are under more control there. That was bang on where the old one was. You're on I think. under more control. Yeah. So you've you've just reproduced the, that the felt, other shot. I just changed my hand. Yeah, I noticed actually, you changed it to that. Stable. Yeah. These things will, but remember again, you don't adopt what works twenty times down the down the yeah. road. You're gonna get one go at this. Yeah. So you need to refine your technique so that the first time you bring that rifle up, it's there, it's ready for you, and you can do your five second thing. Wonderful. Okay, so it's not about, you're not going to have 20 shots at a wrap, you're going to have one. Yeah. But by the time you've done that, you'll have distilled everything into that shot. Perfect. Is this too complicated? No, this is Good. brilliant. I'm like, I'm just soak it all up, soak it all up. You're, yes. Just keep practicing. Yeah. You have already got it. Okay. All right. You're a pleasure she's to teach. <laughs> pleasure to teach, even if she's a little bit mad, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, well Terry and Nicole. Now we have two Field Sports Lives coming up. This is my chance to meet the viewers and talk, sing, act, entertain, I hope, for 90 minutes in a warm village hall. The first is at Castor Village Hall in North Cambridgeshire on Friday the 9th of February 2024, organised by Mark Froggart starting at 7.30pm. The second, starting at the same time, is six days later in the West Midlands. On Thursday the 15th of February, we come to Earlswood Town Football Club near Solihull. Thanks to member Stephen Cartland for sorting out that one. They are free, these events, to field sports members and a tenner to viewers, which you get back if you join up on the night. Field sports members just need to drop me an email to say that they and their guests are coming. Links for more details and to buy tickets below. 
Next, Ian Hodge on which pro PCP air guns are selling well. We would only say any other day in, in the shop, PCPs now are getting more and more of the market, whereas once upon a time, people still bought Springers. Springers still have got a part, but PCP, there are some budget ones which bring people into it, and then as they get more serious and more committed and hooked, they tend to move on to what we call the, the semi-professional or the professional ones. And it's a lot more expensive for us to stock, but, it, but people will buy it if you've got the quality and the performance there which is what people are looking for and, and it's like anything in life the more you pay you do it's it's not a name thing it, you do get better um better quality stock for the for the for the money right so this is the bsa and this is the the fx they very similar guns to look at you can vary the power on, on the fx this one's got a carb, carbon fiber bottle which makes it very light it's a lo lovely lightweight gun from a whole grip there which is, I love that, that's like an extension to your hand, I think, it makes it so steady. So um, FX, you are looking at top end, top end money there, but they do sell, um, and sell well for us. But this is the BSA, the new R12177, this one. This has got a, a different magazine. Um, a few people had issues with the magazine previously, so they redesigned that. Um, it's not the cheapest, cheapest air gun, and air guns generally have gone up. Uh, especially the, the higher end ones slightly like everything else over the last few years but you do get a lovely crisp trigger pull it's almost silent um, it's, it's one of the things with these guns and all the quality PCPs people almost think there's something wrong with the gun because it's so quiet and if they've been used to a Springer they buy one of these we've had people phone up and say that it's not making any noise uh, is there something wrong with it um, and obviously it's not, and we just say it's, uh, it's how good the gun is. Probably one of them now, isn't it? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's how quick it works, that's how good Field Sports Channel is. <laughs> yeah, we get people phoning up saying that the gun is so so quiet, is that correct? Is, uh, is it pushing out enough power, is it powerful enough? And then we explain that, that is the, the beauty of PCP, and the better quality silence and the better quality gun goes quieter and quieter, which is what, um, which is what people want. With these, you, you're looking, you know, hundreds of shots. I think this one's about 200. Uh, the FX there, uh, that's up in the up in the high hundreds. Totally unbelievable, really, how how they how they do it. But it does work, and, and it is good. Main thing is, don't leave them in a shed, which gets damp, which people some people do. They think, oh, I'll just leave it there, and then it's you shouldn't. I mean, it's not the law that they should be locked up. But they will leave them in a damp shed or in the car and the cars go very cold at night even in the summer um, there's nothing worse for any gun to have the temperatures um, moving up and down and also the seals in the guns if there's too much extreme temperature the seals the seals uh, don't like that at the end of the day you don't need to go over the top with a scope we often tell people this because you know they uh, at the end of the day they're only shooting at 45 50 yards you don't want to put poor tires on a good car on a sports car and it's, it's the same with this. There's no point spending this money on an air rifle and then putting a 50 pound scope on there. But if you're looking at two to 300 pound on a nice scope, so you get nice glass, uh, which is what you want to get the clarity. And if you're using night vision equipment on it, add-ons and so on, uh, that always helps. They're, they're buying the new day and night scopes, putting it on there and job's done. And they haven't got to worry about it. They can shoot rats at night and rabbits at daytime. And silencers, this one comes with a silencer Silencers actually aren't too bad compared to the gun. You'd look at anything from 50 to 100 pounds. But the scope is whatever. We've had people spend a thousand pounds on scope to put on a, a Springer air gun. But, you know, we're, we're quite happy for them to do that. <laughs> but you don't really need to. For more about PCPs from Ian Hodge Field Sports, follow the link in the description below. Thanks, Ian. Now from Kit to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Marchington. It's Hunting YouTube. Here's my pick of the best hunting and shooting videos on YouTube this week. First, here's one that demonstrates just how far air guns have come in recent years. Mountain Sport Air Guns is hunting coyotes with a pre-charged air rifle called the Rattler. It's a semi-auto in 30 caliber with the power set to 100 foot-pounds. He's using some clever tech to detect when there's a coyote approaching too. Next, a beautiful film from Andrea Cavalia, who's hunting red deer in the mountains with a group of friends after the first big snowfall of the year. Meanwhile, in Utah, 
far, Joseph Carter is known for using tame mink and terriers to kill farmyard rats. He spends a lot of time digging and wonders if he could train a badger to do the work for him. Next, Meat Eater takes a group to South Dakota for the state's festive pheasant season opener. They're walking up the birds over dogs and highlighting the conservation benefits of this type of upland hunting. Here's a rather more hardcore type of walked-up shooting. Travis Frank takes a float plane into remote Alaskan bush country and hikes the mountain peaks in search of ptarmigan. Back to the UK and Tom and Harry from the Deercast podcast are invited by one of their listeners to visit Cambridgeshire to stalk Chinese water deer. Next, an extraordinary story from Pedro Ampuero, who travels to Uganda to hunt buffalo with a bow. As you can imagine, it's anything but straightforward. Pedro calls it the craziest hunt he's ever experienced. And finally, here's a fascinating look at the Snare Busters anti-poaching campaign in South Africa, showing what it takes to run a successful operation, and how they're collecting and using data to become more efficient. Well, that's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link. James M at fieldsportschannel.tv well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.